revenue-wise, how does a line fit in? YG has now had a whole series, touch wood, yeah. this whole series of record years. Mm -hmm. We're growing in almost every market segment. Okay. Um, live is still, despite all of its success, yeah. it's a very small part of our right. business. We are over 80% of our revenue is passive loudspeakers. Uh -huh. So how about the breakup between reference and peaks? Peaks are price-wise is a lot lower than a reference series. When we introduced peaks, we thought that it would be, it would be a chance to have a product a very audiophile product still in this high-end sector yeah. in this kind of in this family of well-known high-end brands right. we've been surprised by the sales levels of peaks they're much much higher than we expected yeah. again touch wood and we've uh -huh. been lucky peaks has ended up competing with a lot of loudspeaker manufacturers right. that we didn't see as our natural competitors uh -huh. they it's ended up selling very well uh -huh. in the mid-range yeah. um, marketplace for lots of reasons, it's it's very compatible with different amplifiers. Mm. It's very room compatible. Mm. The design works well in rooms. Mm. So, Pix has done very very well, mm -hmm. but the the majority of our revenue is still reference. Okay. Yeah. So, current production capacity can it handle you know the, the orders that you're getting for the very much. Series? We have invested since I started. This yeah. Huge investment in the factory. Yeah. We probably have ten times the manufacturing capability that we had when I started. Uh -huh. um, the our challenge has been not what we do in house, yeah. but where we use uh, third party right. companies. Um, uh, so, yeah. for example, yeah. the Peaks cabinets. Yeah, right. We work with um, a handful of European cabinet manufacturers uh -huh. that build them to our exact specification. Uh -huh. It's a very special material, a very special veneer. Right. Our, our ability to scale peaks has yeah. been limited by the capability of our suppliers uh -huh. to scale peaks yeah. cabinet production. Mm -hmm. But internally, wow. we've scaled our capabilities. We're well within what we can wow. manage. Your reference speakers were made of aluminum. So uh, tolerance-wise, it's quite small, mm -hmm. but when you use the wood you got to have higher tolerance isn't it no you don't have to you it's have to. Oh. if you um there are many areas yeah. if you look at um uh, high-end manufacturing in wood yeah it's very easy to have tolerances which well not very easy mm. it's possible okay. tolerances which are down to yeah. fractions of a millimeter okay uh what what we do with the cabinet manufacturers we've used yeah it ends up being a collaboration. Uh -huh. We invite them to the factory. Yeah. We spend a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. We help them design the process for building it. Okay. Let's say with peaks, um, the two sidewalls of uh -huh. peaks are very exactly curved. Yeah. They're curved to within a tolerance of about 0.2 of a millimeter. Uh -huh. We help the cabinet manufacturers design presses that would let them achieve that accuracy. Wow. We help them select the adhesives, the veneer, uh -huh. we, all of the manufacturing. We work hand in hand with them, wow. so that in the but, end, but you're, you're not from their field. But how how do you have those kind of information? That uh, you learn. Oh, wow. It's like everything. Yeah. I mean, in I have worked in many different fields. Right. I have a lot of um, various experience. Uh -huh. When I started in 2020 yeah. uh, at YG, I never worked in detail with machining aluminium for speakers before right. you learn yeah um, and you use your scientific knowledge the mathematics the modeling capability to guide what you understand and you of course you also learn from the supplier it's like yeah. every collaboration okay. yeah. because they're experts in wood uh -huh. and you get them to explain to you what uh -huh. the challenges are yeah and you help work out with them how to overcome them. So oh. it's really good. We've become such good friends with them. Okay. It feels almost like your one company. With Cambridge Acoustics Sciences, I understand that there is a musicologist. Yes. How, how does it work? Uh, I mean, what kind of job does he do? Well, he does the same job as everyone else does. <laughs> um, it's the same. I'm an astrophysicist. Yeah. It doesn't mean I do astrophysics. Yeah. Um, the Andreas, yeah. um, is an amazing, he's, a, he's an encyclopedia oh. of music. He's, yeah. He has such a fine ear. Mm -hmm. His 
especially with classical instruments, yeah. it, his ability to tell when a speaker is accurate uh -huh. is incredible. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to have him there. Uh -huh. But he does the same work as all of the rest of us oh, do. Really? He, he helps us, he helps us on top of what, what we do, making speakers, mm -hmm. He helps us pick uh, good tracks for demonstrations. Mm -hmm. He helps us understand where we should be tuning our design. Mm -hmm. um, he, he helps us. We have some very fun collaborations coming up with musicians and recording labels. Okay. He helps with those. Yeah. So, um, it's, but it, it, it's so useful to have that depth of knowledge. Uh -huh. It's incredible. Does he attend the shows as well? Yes. Andreas is based in Berlin. Yeah. He ah, attends okay. the... The Munich show, the Munich show. Yeah. and I think depending on his timetable, yeah. uh, probably some of the Euro other European shows, yeah. he may well may well be coming to some of the Asia Pacific shows. I heard that in Munich show, your staffs at your booth were quite different from other uh, other booths. Can you tell us about it? I think for us, yeah. every single person who works at YG yeah. loves what we do. Mm -hmm. It's we are so lucky to have the team that we have. Mm -hmm. Almost every person at YG yeah. could be earning more money somewhere else. Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> they're, they're with us because they love what we do, what we make. They're mm -hmm. so proud mm -hmm. and they love listening to music. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people who work at the factory are musicians. Yeah. They're, it's part of their, it's like it's in their blood. Mm -hmm. When we run shows, um, a lot of audio shows, it's not always the case. There are, many other rooms which are fun like ours yeah but a lot of the rooms it's very you know we we will play these four tracks this is all we're doing everyone there is very serious yeah that's that's not why we do munich uh -huh. we want to share how much we love what we do with uh -huh. people yeah. so you'll have you'll have people from yg we take a huge team we yeah. take like 10 or 12 people yeah so last year it was 12 or 13 people so the room we have lots of people from the company. Yeah. It's many different countries. Yes, from many different countries. Yeah. We're an international company. Yeah. And they're there to listen to what we have, to talk to customers, dealers, distributors, to listen to what's in the marketplace, mm -hmm. to give us a feeling of context. Yeah. But most of all, most important, they're there to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. you, if you're not enjoying this, this sector, it's about joy. Uh -huh. And if you forget that, if yeah. you start getting bogged down in competition and, you know, worry and that's, please, that's yeah. not what we're in. Yeah. We're in the business of fun. Uh -huh. So you'll find people from YG uh -huh. dancing at the edge of our big room. Yeah. They, we try to pick tracks that we enjoy. Uh -huh. We're a lot more open-minded when uh -huh. a lot of rooms won't let people pick their own tracks. Whenever yeah. we can, mm -hmm. we open up the, the set of uh, uh -huh. tracks so that we can let people try their own music and we learn something from yeah. that. What is the future of uh, YG Acoustics like? The, the strange thing with the development of YG from here is that with where we are understanding human hearing and human response to music and our simulation capabilities, we have an R&D roadmap which is probably five years, even ten years ahead of our manufacturing. Yeah. So we have some amazing in-wall, in-ceilings. We have some great speaker products at higher price point and a lower price point. We, there are so many things I want to play with. Yeah. We have some great ideas for headphones that uh -huh. I want to try. Yeah. Are you planning to make headphones in the future? I would love to, yeah. but we don't have the manufacturing for exactly. it right now. Yeah. So while the design is there, and because of how good our simulation now is, yeah. I'm very confident it'll yeah. sound good. Uh -huh. We we would have to, it involves a very special type of driver that yeah. we would have to make and right. prototype and test. It involves a whole new set of manufacturing, yeah. packaging, a whole new path to market. Yeah. So the the funny thing is the, the design side yeah. is now so easy. Yeah. We have to work out how to turn these products into reality. And to turn them into reality in a way that we made this mistake with Peaks. Yeah. We made beautiful products and yeah. we couldn't produce them fast enough. Right. So a lot of disappointed customers. Yeah. They, in the first three weeks after we launched Peaks, yeah. we sold more than we expected to in two years. Uh -huh. And we were, we were playing catch up right. for 18 months. Yeah. 
all I can say to all of these people, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't expect it. Yeah. And we just didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. What I will promise is we'll never do that again. Mm -hmm. If we, let's say if we make headphones, yeah. I want to have a path. I will build up stock. Mm -hmm. We will have a generous amount ready to sell. Yeah. Then we'll announce it. It's beautiful because what we've learned in terms of this sense of magic, yeah. it applies to everything uh -huh. from headphones to in walls to concert reinforcement sound. Yeah. All of these things apply yeah. um, through the surround. Uh -huh. The understanding how human perception of sonic spaces works. Yeah. There are whole different ways you can approach surround sound, wow. which I don't think people have looked at before. So you're going to go for multi-channel as well. Yeah. Then. In Korea, there are people who use your speakers as a multi-channel speakers as well. Yes. Yeah. I think using our speakers for multi-channel, absolutely. Uh -huh. The fun thing is there are new theories yeah. of how multi-channel sound should work, right. which are very different to the ways that current processors uh, work. I'm seeing the future of the live version here. <laughs> it could be great fun. Yeah. Um, and I think the good thing is now that we understand how ears work, yeah. the ability to have live systems mm -hmm. where you can put the speakers anywhere. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be laid out exactly as a perfectly pointed stereo pair and give a sound field which is convincing and beautiful over a huge space. It's such good fun. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. It sounds exciting. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> thank you.